Um, so the team here today, I'm our HR manager. I have George Martin with me, and he is our IT manager. Give a little wave, George. And then Eric Abbey is our account manager. He is in the office right now, so you can see him there. So we are on social media. So if you are on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram, um, feel free to follow us. Feel free to um, check out our website. Um, I have our email addresses at the end of today's presentation if you wanna reach out to us after today. So we're gonna start with what's extrusion and I'm gonna let Eric, who's my resident expert, talk about extrusion to you. Well, thank you, Jenny, and uh, welcome everyone. Yeah, what is extrusion? Uh, when we talk about extrusion, if you can remember when you're a young child and you had a Play-Doh machine that would uh, press out shapes, uh, put the Play-Doh in, press, out, press on it, and a shape would come out. Well, that's somewhat like what extrusion is. From this diagram, you can see what an extrusion process, the equipment looks like. As you see the uh, hopper, this is where the material comes in. Then you have a screw that is actually inside the screw is heated. So these plas this plastic is melted and pushed out the end of a die. When it comes out the die, the extrudent is about oh, 300 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit in temperature. So you have to have some way of cooling the the temperature. So it goes through a water bath and in, within the water bath itself, there are plates that will hold the shape to its size that is needed. Now, how do you pull it down the line? Well, we have a complicated machine called a puller. Hence the pulling it down the line, hence the name puller. And then finally, at the end of the line, there'll be some sort of cutting mechanism or punching or winding mechanism. And then, so that's basically the extrusion line, a very simplistic uh, view of an extrusion line. Now, what we're going to be showing is a couple of videos here that uh, are real live uh, extrusion process going on. And so I'll walk you through that as well. All right, so here's our first video. So if you came into our plant right now, this is what you would be seeing. Right there, this is a, some of our materials require drying. And this is a dryer that dries the plastic pellets. Plastic pellets you'll see here in a minute are in this big box. These are little pellets like uh, grain, big grains of salt. One of the things that we have at the plant is we try, try to stay really organized with our tools and everything else. Here's the extruder. The material is pressed out the die, going out the front, down through a water bath, all the way down the line. This water is cooling off the part. As I mentioned before, it was about 300 to 400 degrees, and now it's cool. Here's the pulling mechanism that is actually pulling the part through the water trough. It also goes through what we call an inline punch, it goes through this mechanism, and then it notches get punched in. As you can see, there's like a V notch that was in the, the part itself. This is being punched with that machine itself and cut to length. And then the part itself goes to a sweep and an operator places it in a box. And that is a typical extrusion line itself. Here's another sample of an extrusion line. And you can see it's held up the shape fixtures that hold the shape in the water. There's water there that creates the shape and freezes it, it, it into the shape itself. It's a similar process. It's a different material, but it's a, just another sample of an extrusion line. Once again, it goes through a polar mechanism, and then it goes into what we call a cutter that cuts it to a prescri prescribed length. It's going through there very slowly, 
a lot of our jobs run a lot faster than this, but this is such a precise job that we run it at a little bit slower rate. And moving backwards is some of the things that are within it. There's an air blow off because the parles still have water from the bath. And that is the other uh, picture of the extruder. This is a smaller extruder that we use to extrude other materials, what we call a co-extruder, on some of the jobs that we do. And uh, you can see what the tip of a screw looks like and what an extruder looks like just sitting there idle. All right, so a little bit about us at Custom Profile. We have actually been in business since 1992. I'm going to apologize if you hear dogs barking in the background because they're not getting along right now. So just heads up on that. Um, we are employee owned, which is pretty exciting for us. We became employee owned last year, which means all of our employees have a share in the company, um, which is really exciting. And we're all very excited for the growth of custom profile. We do monthly community service events to give back to the community. So we have helped um, the Kent County Sheriff's Department before. We've raised money for the um, bulletproof vests that the canines wear. We do work for the Children's Advocacy Center. We do work for a lot of different kids' food basket. Um, so we're pretty excited about we, the, that we can give back. We do have a set up apprenticeship program. So we have an opportunity where uh, employees can come in. They can take a couple of classes at GRCC track their hours, and end up with a Department of Labor certified apprenticeship. Um, we have competitive salaries. We work all three shifts in our Michigan location. We have great benefits, health, vision, dental. Um, we have a wellness program. We reimburse gym memberships. And we also have three different locations. So our main location is in Michigan in Grand Rapids. And then we just opened a facility down in Camden, South Carolina earlier this year. And we have a facility in Juarez, Mexico. And some of the videos you're going to see today are actually from our Mexico facility. So why we have three different facilities is because we have strategically kind of placed ourselves where some of our top customers are. So when we moved to Mexico back in 2007, eight-ish, um, we moved to support Electrolux, who makes the refrigerators. So we can make tubes for them and ship them right across the street to their facility, and then they can install them directly into the refrigerators. And exciting in our Juarez facility, in our Mexico facility, we also have a clean room. So we're making um, tubes that go into medical equipment. Um, which we'll show you show you some of that too. So you can see a picture of our Grand Rapids facility to the left that uh, Like I said, we've been in business since 92. We haven't been in this location our whole time, but we um, Have 19 extrusion lines. We have nine co-extruders. Those are those smaller pieces of equipment that that Eric was talking about our Mexico facility in 2008 has nine extrusion lines and then our new South Carolina facility we have five extrusion lines down there so let me so these are um, uh, some pictures of us we have a lot of fun at custom profile so from dressing up for Christmas um, this is a picture of our team with the Kent County canines like I said we raised money um, to help with their bulletproof vests as well as their buddy bags which um, if they're injured in the line of duty, then they have their medical equipment in a bag. Um, we, um, this is one of our apprentices he, that completed at Thanksgiving time. We've done Thanksgiving pies. So, you know, it's not just coming to work and going home every day. We have a lot of fun. We're with these, a lot of our coworkers more than we are with our family members sometimes. So you have to enjoy where you work. Um, like I said, the community service, we do a lot of community service. So um, from care packages to food drives to um, toys at Christmas time, um, we do a whole lot of different things. A big thing for us at Custom Profile is we like competition and we like food. So if we can uh, have each of those things or have a food competition, you can raise a lot of money. Looking at the most 
We can pause <laughs> one sitting. So um, what kind of jobs are at Custom Profile? I mean, we are a manufacturer, but we don't only have manufacturing jobs. We don't have just production positions. We have a lot of different positions. So this picture actually is of our engineering team. And um, you can see they all have a picture of one person's face because he went back to school and he got his degree at GRCC in CAD design. Um, he, um, that employee started on the floor as an operator. He worked himself up. He started doing um, part-time um, CAD for us in engineering and then got finished getting his degree. So this was a celebration. So this is our engineering team all pretending they're him um, as they were celebrating. So we do have a lot of engineers that work for us, but we also have maintenance. We have customer service. We have purchasing. We have scheduling. We have human resources. We have accounting. Um, IT, George looks like he had to pop off for a minute, but George is our IT manager. We have sales. Eric Abbey works in sales, but he started with us in engineering. He was a, um, a project engineer for us when he started, and then he's done a whole bunch of other things while he's been with us too, and he'll tell you about that. Um, we have employees who are operators, who run our product, who make sure they're running good quality product before it gets sent out to the customers. So there's a lot of different positions um, in our organization that you can start off in. And, oops. So now I'm gonna introduce Eric Abbey. I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit about his job and a little bit about what he's done through the years. Well, thanks again, Jay. Uh, what, my my role here at Custom Profile is an account management or account manager. That's a, I guess a better name uh, you might recognize as a sales person or a salesman. Uh, I started with Custom Profile about 10 years ago, or actually 11 years ago. Time flies when you're having fun. And I started as a project engineer and then went into program management and then uh, manage the program managers and they recently have taken on a sales role. Um, my job itself is pretty straightforward. My role is a lot, of, a lot of the times we are going out soliciting for new work. And so I have to introduce custom profile to a new company that may not know custom profile. Uh, for example, uh, your, the, the group here that was, is on tonight, they are, you don't know much about custom profile. So my role would be to educate you about custom profile or capabilities and what we do. Uh, then I would, uh, once we got past that stage and you wanted us to take a look at uh, maybe quoting or doing a project for you, I would have to determine whether or not the project is a fit for us is the feasibility based off our process and our capability and our technology. And then I'd also, part of my job is to look at what you want to have done and see if I can do anything to optimize it to make it a better part, a less costly part, or it could uh, combine uh, different uh, mechanisms to make it even, even a better part. Then of course, what a good salesman has to do is come up with a price. And so that's part of my role too right now is to do a quotation for the customer who has requested it. And then I follow up on it to make sure that I've given him everything that he needs, make sure that there's nothing that I've missed and make sure that he has uh, anything that, every, everything that he needs to make his decisions and that's what when I follow up and just continually follow up with them on that. Then with the, the successful projects that are released to us, I have to work as the customer to our engineering group, meaning that I am the voice of the customer. I need to make sure that the customer is getting what they want from our engineering and our product development group team. So that that may be uh, saying that, hey, this part is not exactly what they need. We need to make some changes or this part has to be done by such and such time. We need to put some more uh, emphasis on, on this product. 
So there's several things. I become the customer for the customer. And then the final final role that I have is following up with the customer, make sure we're on time, we're doing the things we need to do, uh, making sure that we're not missing anything or if there are any add-ons that the, you may need to the product that we're trying to sell. Uh, so those are key, the key roles that I do here also. Um, with uh, There's several other little roles that happen. We're all team players. We all wear a lot of hats. We're a good team group that we work together. So we'll get into other avenues and other roles, but for the most part, these are my, my main roles themselves. A little bit more about my background here is I started, uh, I, I went to uh, college up at Ferris State University thinking I was going to be a pharmacist. I ended up, uh, not going into that role, and I transferred into the plastics engineering technology and got my degree there. And then I took a job with a plastics company back in 1986, and that was in the extrusion business. So I've been in the extrusion business for almost 35 years, and I've loved every minute of it. And and I'm still here working for Custom Profile, and I my spiel is done, folks. So. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. All right, George is back and he is going to tell you a little bit about him and his position. Hey everybody, uh, I'm George Martin. Uh, so I work in the IT department as the IT manager for Custom Profile. Um, so uh, a little bit about my role is uh, really it's related to anything uh, technology based. So that could be anything from your computer uh, to your phone, your cell phone, uh, a website, um, systems we use internally. Uh, as you saw from the pictures, we have all those big machines and those big machines all have different settings depending on uh, what product we're running. Uh, so we have to have ways for uh, people to get that information when they need it. So that's really uh, what my job revolves around is facilitating what people need when it comes to technology. So we really, uh, in the IT department, oversee how the company uses the technology and what they can use it for to make sure that it's secure and that it's actually being used for what it's intended. Uh, the other piece of that is really providing the equipment that they need to make the, function, the systems function. So just as everybody right now is dialed into a meeting, we do this uh, daily at work. So we need to make sure everybody has the technology they need to work from home, uh, to communicate with people in our South Carolina plant. As Jenny said, we have three different plants and we all have to be on the same page at the same time uh, to make things run in harmony. So IT plays a big role in, in that function to make sure everybody is able to communicate. Um, we have a ton of information, um, you know, as you saw, there's papers, there was computers out at those lines that are tracking quality. Uh, that is all information that we have to make sure that we have stored, we have it secure, and we have it backed up. So uh, in the event of an emergency, if uh, something horrible like a fire happens, um, you know, if we uh, have backups of all our information, then we're able to retrieve that and uh, and you know we're not as in as much trouble as we would be if we didn't have any backups. So that's kind of uh, what my job entails. Um, a little bit of my background, uh, I went to Western Michigan University and I got my bachelor's degree in information technology. I've had a wide array of roles in IT. I, I started out at a help desk uh, where I was supporting computers and some uh, software that, that uh, an electrical distributor was using. Um, out of, after that, I migrated to more of a uh, business analyst role where I was listening to business problems, whether that was, um, you know, trying to get uh, a system installed out in the plant or um, a system to manage uh, meetings, for instance, uh, like we're doing now. I was listening to those problems and interpreting that and turning that into what technology was required. Um, and then uh, finally, I ended up as the IT manager at Custom Profile where um, I'm kind of in a, a position where I'm overseeing all of the ongoing IT 
infrastructure, websites, um, phones, communication, all of that is, is kind of under my umbrella. So uh, it's a, um, it, it is definitely an important role in an organization because, um, you know, without communication and without the information, it is uh, very difficult for people to do their jobs. So uh, that's kind of my role here. And, uh, here. All right, thank you, George. And all righty, so a little bit about me. Um, I am the HR manager for Custom Profile. So honestly, I do a little bit of everything. Like Eric said, I think we all do a little bit of everything, but I'm my responsibility is to help the company and help the employees. So everything from managing our policies and procedures, just like you guys have rules at school you have to follow. We have rules at work we have to follow. Um, managing those, helping with adding facilities to our organization. So, you know, all three of us were pretty busy when we had to open a new facility down in South Carolina, getting, making sure the infrastructure was there and the jobs were sent down correctly and our machines were sent down properly and we had new employees to run the facility. So we're all, um, we're all involved in a little bit of everything, but I also help employees with questions. So on a daily basis, people have questions about their benefits or their payroll or, um, you know, questions about the setup apprenticeship program or uh, recruiting new employees to the organization. I do um, interviewing and hiring for both locations in South Carolina and in Michigan. And um, I support the Juarez Mexico facility, but they do their own recruiting down there. And then I also help with things like this, which is fun, is working with the schools and working with students. And the one thing I can say is get an internship. Um, you know, that's a big, big plus to get to know an organization and get to know what you want to do. So I went to Grand Valley um, and got my, go ahead, Eric, make your comment. You know, you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Being a Ferris grad, we're rivals. <laughs> So I went to Grand Valley. I also got my bachelor's degree in business administration and my emphasis was in human resources. So honestly, when I started at Grand Valley, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I started taking classes and figured I'd figure it out, right? And as I started taking more classes at, at, um, at my goodness, Grand Valley, I realized what I didn't want to do. I knew finance was not for me. I knew IT was not for me. I knew marketing was not for me. So I, I kind of tried and took classes in a lot of different things to figure out what was the right fit for me. And uh, human resources seemed like a good fit. I'm a helper by nature. And um, if I get the opportunity to help an organization grow, um, help employees and families um, get employment. Um, that's that's what I enjoy to do. So um, I did start my career at an internship. I had an internship in Holland for the Holland Board of Public Works. And so it's um, wastewater treatment, electricity, things like that. And I was an intern that helped safety, HR, and marketing. So I did a little bit of everything. And then I got a job working in HR recruiting at a cleaning company. So I hired cleaners. And sometimes I had to go clean buildings at night. So if there were too many call-ins one night, I'd be going to buildings to clean because the customers expected to clean buildings when they started the next day. You do what you got to do to help the organization. And then I have been with Custom Profile for 20 years um, this year and um, started as employee number 26. And now we have over 400 employees. So this is, um, it's pretty exciting to be with a growing company and, and everything that's happened over the years. So pretty exciting. Okay, so we have a lot of different customers. This is just a high level view of our customers and you probably recognize some of those names. 
um, Coca-Cola, Herman Miller, Electrolux, Hayworth, Whirlpool. Whirlpool. Um, I have an intern next to me participating tonight. So if you hear extra words, it's coming from him. Um, so you can see a lot of different customers. And Eric, how many total customers do you think we have? We have over 100 active customers, really about uh, 20 to 25 customers uh, are the core business. And then we have the single type customers that we only have one or two products with too. So um, we do a lot of variety. We work with a lot of different industries and um, our main customers are in the furniture, appliance, and we kind of have an other bucket, which would include like um, recreational vehicles like jet skis, canoes, kayaks, paddle boats, um, a lot of different, a lot of different things. So we'll continue on here. So now we're going to have a little contest and um, I need everybody to put their answer in the chat and we'll figure out how, uh, whoever gets the most right I'll contact Michelle and we'll send you uh, some custom profile swag if you win. And Eric and George can't participate, so. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show you a picture of a part and you have to try to guess where that part goes, what type of, um, uh, you know, what, what the part goes into. Just send your guess via chat and if you wanna send it privately to me, you can. Or, or if you want to do it to everybody, that's fine too. But here we go. It's private. All right. So where does this part go? I'll give you a minute to look at it, think about it. Okay. I don't care if it's still wrong. Okay. All right, we're gonna move on. Get your last guess in. All right, here we go. This goes into refrigerators. So if you have a refrigerator that has a water dispenser, that tube is keeping your water cold. So you always have cold water when you go get water out of your refrigerator. All right, next one. This is tricky because um, there's a lot of different parts here, but they all go in the same place. Oh, dang. I know this one. Where's it going? Mm. 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 All right. One more second. Get those answers in. We have a winner on this one. Yes, we do. Oh. There you go. Inside a fridge. It's on your shelves in your fridge. All right. Next one. How about this one? And I don't know if you can tell, but this is a solid. It's solid. So there's a print. This little thing here, that would be what it would look like if you're looking straight at it, solid. Should I know what this is? Mm -hmm. You're like, I know what it is. No guesses? Come on, you guys. Come on, no one else? Uh, All right, I'm going to move on. This goes, it is a, so, it is something. It, it actually <laughs> uh, is a poly rope, and the rope goes in the canopy of an RV. Oh, shoot. So correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but from what I understand is the customer was having problems with the ropes getting moldy and cracking and breaking. And so they wanted 
this poly rope that was going to kind of withstand the weather a little bit better than a normal rope. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We replaced a more of a cable type uh, approach with this plastic uh, material that is was much, much more durable and had weather resistance and uh, we have a very satisfied customer now. And that's what's really interesting about us is customers come to us all the time with problems they're looking to solve. And so we have a lot of really smart engineers that help them figure out their, the answers to their problems. All right, how about this one? So the picture on the right is the CAD print and the picture on the left is the actual part. Hmm. What is it called? I'm just gonna say this. Hmm. Just that picture looks like it. Am I right? Mm -hmm. no, not. Getting some really good guesses today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would have no clue what this was if I didn't wasn't involved with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's tricky. All right. What any more guesses? What is it for? All right, here we go. It is for a jet ski. So it is the bumper that goes around a sea -Doo. And this part was very interesting as well because it has to withstand being in the water all the time. And impact heat you know the sun beating on it all the time and so um this had to withstand the weather all right how about this one any guesses No more guesses. I will tell you, it does not go in an appliance. Okay, here we go. So now you might be looking at this picture and you're like, which one does it go on? <laughs> what is it? Eric, do you want to explain what that is? It's in the shower. And it's a channel that goes inside the shower door and seals off the shower itself. If you look in there, you know, a lot of your showers, you'll see when the, if it's a glass door or something like that, there'll be an extrusion that seals it off. And that's, that's what this one does. Oh, like the one we have in Bayswater, it has that. Mm -hmm. Some really good guesses though. Yeah. All right, how about this one? That one's not. It looks like the one in the first picture, but I will tell you it is not. It's not the same answer as the first one. Is it close to the same answer? Nope. What is that? I'm just so confused by this. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Good answers. You guys have yeah. probably given us some ideas for some sales. I'm writing them down as we speak. <laughs> this is our medical tubing that we make. Of course it is. So we make that in our Juarez, Mexico facility. So good job. You guys did a good job guessing. So that's all I got for the guesses. So you guys did all an awesome job. So I'll try to reach Michelle and maybe send you all something. We'll, we'll get that figured out. Thank you. So they're definitely, uh, you know, almost winners on them. I would have gave them a couple of prizes for some of their guesses. Close <laughs> enough. 
We'll, we'll get you guys taken care of. So we do over, I mean, this is probably an outdated number, but we do a lot of different types of products. We make pieces, this bottom brace raceway goes into office panels of the furniture industry. These tube tanks, we make so many different variations of these tube tanks that go into the refrigerators based on sizes of refrigerators and types of refrigerators. This rub rail goes around pontoon boats. So in the springtime, when Sam's Club hauls out all their pontoon boats that they're selling for the year, those colored edges, the pink, the camo color, the blue, we make all of those. So um, you can keep an eye out for that when you see it out in the, in the stores. Um, there's all sorts of different things we do. Big, small, simple, complex. You can see all the different colors we do, shapes, sizes. Um, some things that are really small and some things that are, are really long and complicated. We do a lot of different colors, over 500 different colors, and we'll match. Those ones in the middle are wood grain. So we will make a wood kind of color on the parts that will go to tables. And those T moldings, the, the best way I describe it, and I know you guys can't respond to me, but you know the tables in your lunch room with the plastic edge that you pick at? Yeah. That is molding. And that is what we make. So when you're at lunch and you're picking that molding off the side, now you know where it was made at Custom Profile. <laughs> These tubes are water delivery systems for the refrigeration industry. So we do a lot of a, a lot of that, and we have some videos to show you those processes. Maybe. Okay, so this is down in our Juarez, Mexico facility, and um, this is one of the tube tanks that they make um, down there. So they'll produce the tubing, and then they have an assembly operation that will put it into that tank form. Is that how it goes? And I also wish I had some music or something to put with these videos because they're awful quiet. So that was putting it into that little tank and then they'll take the tank and then they do this operation here. And those are zip ties they are attaching. Oops, sorry. And then this process, I'll let Eric um, explain this a little bit as well. This is down in our Juarez facility. It's called overmolding. Um, and uh, I'll let him explain that. Yeah, one of our customers wanted a different style tip on the tube. So we came up with a way of molding a in on the tubing itself. And so what we do is shove an extruded tube into a mold on these pins and then the mold closes and plastic is shot around a mold and you get a tip that's contoured like that instead of a continuous tube it has a shoulder and it has a taper down so it seals against an o-ring so that we do this on a lot of our tubes this over molding process and we make a variety of colored tubes um, for sure, in the back of an Electrolux refrigerator, there's a green tube, yellow tube, and a brown tube, and we make each of those. Um, as I was looking for videos for today, I ran across a blue tube. So a lot of variety of tubes, right, Eric? Yeah, there's a, the, the tubes are color-coded, so when the uh, assembly operators are putting the refrigerators together, they know a blue tube is for the inlet, and the brown tube is for the outlet. Otherwise, they were getting mixed up. So we offered colors to them and that's how they distinguish between the two tubes when they're assembling a refrigerator. 
All right. Oh, I don't know why I'm struggling here. So here are some other things. We do um, a lot for laundry as well. So this is um, a few different parts that we'll make for your laundry appliances uh, between seals and bumpers. So you can see them listed there. We make pieces that go in your dishwasher. So the edge around your dis dishwasher, it's like a three piece. It's all together, it's one piece, but it folds in the middle. Um, that goes on your dishwasher as a seal. That was actually one of the extrusion lines that we showed earlier, the first video. Mm -hmm. Uh, window components. So someone mentioned in our little contest about um, window trim or blinds or something. We do work for um, have window blinds that we do and you can see we do quite a few different um, pieces for that industry. How many of you have been into a store that has this front um, these point of purchase displays that have the prices on them. We make all of those. So next time, I think Ulta is one of them, maybe that has them, but um, you can keep an eye on that. The bumpers for the, the paddle boats we talked about, the um, canoes, we do a, pa a edging of that, a rub rail for that as well. And then these were um, a lot of different tubes that we do that we can make. Hey. Sorry. Hold on. Pause. I was supposed to get it. And these tubes were Love used it. in a uh, carpet cleaning applications. Also, they're used in some other appliances too, where one of the tubes is used in uh, for steam that goes into uh, your laundry uh, or washing machine and one of these tubes is actually a drain tube that has to go a certain routing to get get around so it can drain properly. Sorry all. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> arf arf. <laughs> crazy, crazy dogs. So this is a video again from our Juarez Mexico facility that shows the tube bending process. So um, I'll show you kind of how they do that. And Eric can talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, what's unique about this is we actually use a oven that you would use in a restaurant to actually su supply the heat that actually forms these tubes. What this operator is doing is just loading the plate. He's going to put it inside an oven. These these are ovens themselves have uh, different temperatures that we can form and heat at and timers. And then what you're seeing right now is a big cooling fan that cools off these tubes. And when you pull them out of the fixtures, it has that uh, form in it that was in the plates themselves. And this is just the box. We make boxes too. <laughs> Alrighty, so if you guys have any questions and we're, we're happy to answer questions that you might have now, um, because if we were on a tour, we would just finish with questions that you have about custom profile or our jobs or anything really. Um, but feel free to reach out to any one of us after today as well. Our email addresses are listed there. Um, and we would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And I guess I just want to, um, Eric, I just want to thank you for just um, informing students of like your initial plan of, of being, you wanted to be a pharmacist, but your decision to change careers kind of shifted. Jenny, George, I just kind of want to hear from you. When you were 16 or 17 years old, did you know what you wanted to do at that age as it relates to careers? No. No, I actually... Uh... I wanted similar to Eric, um, except I, I wanted to be an engineer. Uh, and I took my first year of classes at college and realized that it, it wasn't for me. Uh, so I, I changed my path and, and got into uh, computer science. And I realized I wasn't a huge fan of that either. Um, so I kind of uh, 
uh, redirected to um, information management, which is where I ended up. So. And when I was in high school, I participated in junior achievement. So at the time, junior achievement had a evening high school group that met and we owned our own little companies and our company that I was a part of, we made cookie sheets. And so I knew I liked that. I liked to be a part of that little business that we were in um, and knew that I wanted to do something in that realm. I knew I wasn't meant for engineering. Um, that's just not me. Um, and so I knew it was business going into college, but had no idea what it would be, but yeah, 16, 17, I didn't really have any ideas. Um, now somebody is asking about Kent Career Tech Center's programs and we love Kent Career Tech Center. We do um, a lot of things with KCTC and their mechatronics program. So we do, um, uh, we'll do, we'll go there and be part of their evaluation process, do some of their interviews, um, we've had uh, some of their students come and work for us, and um, I think they have a great program there. Um, and, and yes, absolutely, you can share this video with students. I'd be more than happy to, to talk to, to any students who are interested. Great question. And can you provide students with some of the skills and education that is um, required for a few of your positions that you guys offer? So I will, um, you know, our entry level positions, really all we're looking for are employees who have high school diplomas. So if somebody is either working toward their high school diploma, so they might be still in school working for us or going back to school and getting their GED and working for us, that's okay too. But typically we're looking for people with high school diplomas. We have a basic kind of math assessment for those coming in for our operator positions that because we do a lot of math out on the floor with our quality checks. So we'll do that as part of our interview process. Some of our other positions in the engineering department, um, we usually like to see a bachelor's degree, but um, again, we have plenty of employees who had high school diplomas and they just worked their way up in an organization and never got a bachelor's degree. And for us, that's okay. Um, because you have the experience to go with your, you know, you have the experience um, working at an organization that you can move up yourself up into, which is pretty beneficial. So we're okay either way, but um, a lot of our positions, like George's position, we would look for somebody with a bachelor's degree. Um, Eric's position, we would look for somebody with a bachelor's degree. Those, those kind of higher level positions is what we would look for. Great. And one, one thing I like to do is like give students the good and the bad. If the three of you, whoever decides to, to answer this question, what are the best things you love about what you do and what are some of the things you like the least? And maybe all three of you can answer that. I'll start, I'll start I mean. here. Um, <laughs> so okay, George. Uh, I really, one a couple things I really enjoy about my job is, is I get to explore new technologies. So, uh, you know, depending on what it is, you know, we're always looking to advance ourselves and, and that allows me to explore. I get to evaluate things and test it out. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does and we move forward. Um, that's something I really enjoy uh, as well as just uh, it's rewarding to, um, you know, see myself, things in my department works on making people's lives easier. Um, you know, it's uh, some of the technology, it, it saves them time. It makes them more efficient at their job. It saves them clicks. Um, you know, if, uh, for instance, Jenny uses a payroll system and, and that makes her life easier because she's not having to keep everything on paper or folders. Not that we don't have folders, but, um, you know, it, it makes people's lives easier and it's rewarding to see that. Um, on the flip side of it, uh, sometimes um, with security and, and things like that, I have to make people's lives a little bit difficult. Um, and that could be as simple as saying, you know what, now instead of eight characters on your password, we're going to require 12. Or 
every time you log in, you got to type in this, uh, you know, this code to get in. And, and that's just an extra thing for people to remember. So I can sometimes things that I have to do in my job to, to you know, keep us secure, make people's lives harder. And, and that's not always nice to do. Uh, as well as, you know, sometimes with IT, uh, like Jenny stated before, we run 24-5. So five days a week, we have three shifts. You know, if things happen late at night, you know, there's a chance that I might be up at 10, 11 at night working on an issue. I mean, that's not always ideal, but, you know, uh, you got to do what you got to do to keep making progress. So uh, that's a, a little bit of the good and the bad about uh, my role. I want to jump in on the good and the bad side to also here. Um, the good is that I get the opportunity to work with Jenny and George every day. You both can bring me cupcakes tomorrow. But no, seriously, uh, my personality is one similar to Jenny that just likes to help out. And I get a lot of reward out of my job when I can help a customer out. Uh, for example, here just recently last week, I got a call from a engineer from one of the companies. I won't mention their names, but they were having a lot of service calls because they were having water dripping into their control plan panels and uh, shorting them out. So he calls uh, uh, me up and gives me the information that I needed. And so we collaborate together, come up with the right material, the right design, and the right seal. And lo and behold, it's fixed this problem. I really feel good to net when I can do something like that. And I get a real reward out of my job doing things of this nature. On the flip side, though, if there's something that a customer wants, and I can't provide it to them, hence that the, the feasibility of doing it is not there. I feel really bad about that, but I also try to point him in the direction that they could uh, find another solution. So when um, I end up having to turn a customer away, that's kind of the bad side of my, my job itself. The third bad side is when George makes me change my darn password all the time. That's even the worst part of my job. So. I knew that was so coming. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of, kind of summarizes what uh, uh, my feelings are, the good and the bad in the role as a salesman or account manager. So Eric stole my answer of my favorite thing about working at Custom Profiles with Eric and George. Um, we have a lot of fun uh, at Custom Profile. It's very much a kind of a play hard, work hard environment. There are days that are stressful and busy and chaotic, and um, but we work together and we get the job done. It's a lot of fun. So um, I love my job. Like I said, I'm a helper. So I like when I can help employees with problems. Um, I'm the same with Eric. If I can't help somebody uh, with something, that's a struggle for me. But I can't know everything either. So I just have to know who to contact to get them what they need. Um, HR is tricky because there are situations where we have to make cuts in our employees. We have to let people go. We have to, um, you know, someone might get hurt. There's just situations that you hope don't happen, but they do happen that you have to deal with. So you know, in HR, I think the tough part of that is, is, is that kind of stuff is somebody's livelihood. Um, you know, they might lose their job. Um, they might not be able to uh, keep working at custom profile. So, um, that's tricky, but we get through it and it's fine. Great. So do you have any final remarks? Well, before we go to final remarks, students, are there anything, is there anything that you want to ask um, within the chat? Um, a question, now is the time because they are the experts. Any questions that you may have, we'll give you, give you guys a few seconds. And if not, can the three of you provide our students with some final remarks, um, just some, some tools of, of wisdom that will help them as they continue to explore careers? Well, I'll start and we'll wait for some questions to roll in, but I strongly encourage um, students to get an internship. 
Um, try to get, if you're still in high school, try to get as much experience as you can um, participate in things like this, which is awesome, and learn about different companies. Get internships. Um, we have so many examples at Custom Profile of people who started as operators making, you know, back then it was $8 an hour, making $8 an hour, and now they're, in the case of our engineer, they're a CAD designer. So um, I've moved people into supervisor roles. I've moved people into um, all sorts of different positions. I mean, even Eric started as a project engineer and worked his way into uh, an account manager role. So, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities and you have to be willing to kind of start off somewhere um, to learn. And I think that's the best thing that you can do is just get experience, learn as much as you can so you're prepared to grow. And um, Isaac, your question, how many hours do you work per week? For us, we are full-time. We have, our jobs are, um, my operators are 40 hours a week. And then between George, Eric, and I, it's 40 plus because we're supporting multiple shifts. And um, like Eric, he's still in the office right now and he's been there all day. So uh, it, it depends um, on what's going on in a week, but you know, 45, 50 hours a week is probably pretty normal on a week to week basis. Eric, George, any words of wisdom? Well, I can uh, add on to what, what Jenny said. It, uh, one of the things that uh, I emphasize, and if you drive down the street, you'll see all these manufacturing facilities in Grand Rapids areas. And there's just so many different type of jobs within those organizations. You may not want to do something that has to do with metal stamping, but there's so many different opportunities that do not even uh, apply to a metal stamper or a dirty environment or think, things of this nature. So once you get your foot in the door, there's so many different opportunities that you have in a manufacturing environment. And a lot of organizations that, such as ours, we do not require a college education or we have technicians, we have operators and diff different things of this nature. The, the on-the-job training is a good way uh, to uh, gain knowledge. Uh, you know, we, we say that uh, College of Hard Knocks is uh, just as good as a four-year bachelor's degree. So don't be afraid to just try something, get out there, get yourself within an organization, and you'd be surprised how, if you put a lot of hard work and effort into it, how well you'll be received and how well and how fast that you'll move up within the organization. Yeah, and I'd like to, to add uh, to Eric's point, you know, um, just because, you know, here I, coming from my perspective with IT, you see the products that, that the slideshow um, presented. I mean, you look at that and, and you don't, you know, there's, it's, you don't understand how IT would, would fit into that. But um, like Eric said, just because it's metal stamping or extrusion or, uh, you know, um, building structures, anything, there's always tons of different positions that, that go into that end product. We all work as a team. So, um, you know, you don't want to be short-sighted and thinking that's all you do. That's all that goes into it because there's much more. And, uh, you know, I'd like to add, uh, you know, figure out what you like to do. It's, it's trial and error. You know, you never know. Uh, you might think you like something and you try it and you, and you realize you don't like it. Um, and figure out what you like to do as a hobby. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed computers, but I, I didn't think when I first, when I was in high school, I didn't think that that's what I wanted to do, but I realized that, you know what, um, that's what interests me. So I kind of, you know, on my own, in my personal time, I, I built a computer, things like that, you know, and you start to realize, you know, hey, maybe, maybe that's what, what I want to do, you know, maybe not for the rest of your life, but it's, hey, hey it's worth a shot. So, um, you know, don't feel like you're stuck uh, in what you're doing because there's always opportunity to change and, and improve. And thank you so much. I just want to take this time to thank Jenny 
and Eric and George from Custom Profile for just taking the time out to just speak to us, um, letting us know what a day in, in the life of, you know, what you guys do every single day. And, and students, take that wisdom and put it in your back pocket because now is the time to just explore. Um, we do have resources. You utilize ONET and Roll Nation to just continue to explore the various career positions that was just discussed. It talks about, if you go into ONET or Roll Nation, it'll talk about several positions as well as salaries, things of that nature. So just continue to explore Continue to use resources such as talking tours to get that additional information that you need to make those sound decisions, those major decisions. And um, Eric, I just want to echo what you stated earlier. You know, college isn't for everyone. Everyone's path looks different. So if you take advantage of the internships that are offered, that job shadowing, opportunities that are offered you that's when you know what is a good fit and what you're willing to stay committed to it's once you kind of dive in because you don't want to end up you know thousands and thousands of dollars in debt doing something you don't love so jenny said it best george eric take advantage of those internships job shadows talking tours just so you can get that additional information so you can make those sound decisions. And so again, I just wanna thank you all for attending. I'm going to stop the recording now.